Thank you for listening today. Don't forget to share this episode and subscribe. My guest today on the show is Kelsey Kerslake, the CEO and creative director of Pinegate Road. They are a branding agency that helps entrepreneurs and business owners grow their business through their online presence. Thanks for joining me today, Kelsey. Thanks for having me, John. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so I, I'm very curious and uh, interested to learn a little bit about yourself, your journey on how you became who you are today, and maybe share with the audience members, take a couple years back in terms of your schooling, your upbringing, to then starting a career. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess my background is that I've always been that art kid. <laughs> um, I always loved artistic things. And when it came to going into school, I was like, oh, starving artist mentality. How do I actually make money? Let's do the art on computers. That just kind of made sense to me. So I went to school for graphic design. Um, I went to the University of Iowa for my bachelor's. And then I went to the Savannah College of Art and Design for my master's. And what was interesting is that in my master's, we actually focus so much on brand strategy, on the research, on the development of creating long lasting brands and the impact that design has for businesses and the world. And I love that stuff now. And then I was very, I, I felt a little stifled with how much research I was doing and how little creativity I was able to do during that time. So I started a blog and it was just my creative outlet. I literally called it the diary of Kelsey Cronkite, which was my maiden name, which is the lamest business name ever. <laughs> um, and that little blog turned into what is now Pinegate Road and my design studio. So I started that as a side project while I was in grad school. People started asking me to do their blogs, to do their web design, to do their branding. And it slowly just started growing because of the traction I was finding through the blogging communities. And then a little thing called Pinterest came onto the scene at that time. So I was one of the first users and a lot of our designs were being shown on Pinterest. And that's really when the business started to explode. So during this time, I also did not think that I wanted to start this business. Um, I was very much in the mindset of you go get a corporate job. You don't start your own business when you're 23 years old. You have to go get that salary, you know, earn your ranks in a company before you then take um, the entrepreneur's path. So I decided to work in an organization. I moved up here to Cleveland, Ohio, where I currently live and started working for American Greetings. So I was on their stationery and stickers team, um, doing hand lettering, doing product design. And I was also running Pinegate Road, my design studio on the side. And because of Pinterest and because of the traction we were getting, I ended up getting so booked out while I was working in corporate that I hired a team um, to take on the excess work. And by year three, I was earning more in my design business than I was in my salary. And I and that was just the side business. So I was like, okay, if I can take this full time, I can, I can really even grow this much, much bigger. So in 2016, I took the business full time and kind of grew from there. And I, we didn't mention this right at the beginning, but in 2017, people started asking, how did you grow your design business? How did you take these like artistic talents that you love and have and were growing, but how did you actually do the business side of creating an agency and a, a design business? And so I started mentoring a few people. And over the years, that turned into what is now the Aligned Business, which is our coaching program, helping service providers, coaches, and consultants scale to their first six-figure year in a really, really sustainable way that aligns with the life they want to live. I think that for me, even as I've gone throughout all of these different phases of my business, I never let the business growth and the hustle that comes with entrepreneurship get in the way of the life that I wanted to live. So that has always been really important to me. I take every weekend off. I sleep eight hours a night. I have time for my life and taking care of me and the people around me first before 
the business. And so now we're on track for our first million dollar year. And I'm still able to really take a lot of time off um, to mentor and coach our team and work with our clients, but in a way that goes beyond just me. I've really been able to see the value of scaling and growing with team support and really pouring into them to be able to spread this mission of business and life alignment, um, whether that is in the design agency or in the coaching business. So that is my wrapped up little story there. <laughs> well, I, I love how you mentioned that, you know, it's a lifestyle and a lot of people are so caught up with chasing that, that business dream of theirs, entrepreneurial hustle, side hustle, but then they forget that they have to live. What's mm-hmm. the purpose of running something and creating? Cause you're taking this huge risk and therefore you're running it thinking that you need to satisfy the customer or, you know, be at the impulse of every demand out there. But then you have to think about what is that doing to your mental health, stress levels, you know, relationships, emotional, uh, physical, like detriment to your whole body, right? And mind. So I, I love you mentioning that you're able to take weekends off. You're still there present with your team. Um, now that you're growing, scaling, that you still have a huge, you know, huge component of lifestyle, because that's what I'm all about, right? Like, I'm totally about life. And I'm all about it. like bucket list, living presently at the moment. And yes, there's goals, there's aspirations, but making an impact, a lasting one, so that you can actually help other, other people achieve their own goals. And that's way more rewarding than your own. So I love that. And that's why you're on the show today. <laughs> oh, good. What is one of your bucket list items that you're looking forward to doing soon? Yeah. So for me, I have a lot of different projects. Um, and yes, there's a lot of travel, uh, you know, bucket lists. But, you know, for me, I'm very fortunate to have a team. And like yourself, I'm more uh, interested in making sure that they can have a sustainable life with their own goals and aspirations. Because when you're able to impact others and they see that you actually care and you want to support them along the way, um, it's such a good feeling, right? Yeah. So for me, it's just making more of an impact by creating a community, creating a book, creating you know other things that will make a lasting impact. And this even, right? Hopefully one person can listen that will take action. And that will make an impact in someone's life. And mm-hmm. that's all it takes, right? Absolutely. Um, so if you don't mind sharing, because I know you mentioned arts back yeah. in the day, right? Your, your aspirations growing up. Growing up, did you have people in your circle of influence, family or fam- uh, friends that were entrepreneurs, business owners, did, did they have artistic uh, background? Like why arts? I feel like I always just created. It's one of those natural things. I couldn't help myself from being creative and playing with things. I remember when I was really little, like cutting up my clothes to then turn them into different articles of clothing. Like that was just something fun I was doing at three and four years old. So I think that was just part of that. Um, my mom did, she's not an artist, but she did really, um, support me in being able to pursue a lot of those things. And my great grandfather was actually a sign painter. So he was in the mo- He was not in the movies, but he would like paint signs for all of the movies. And so he had that artistic ability that, I think my mom saw in me at the same time. Um, And then, yes, my family is very entrepreneurial. So my dad and several, I guess, several generations have been entrepreneurs and done their own business. So that has very much been an impact in my life. I always knew that business would be something that I would do eventually. It just didn't seem like something I would do as early as it happened. They all did work in corporate for a little bit and then, you know, maybe a decade and then kind of like learned how to run a business and things like that. And then took their businesses full time. Uh, And yeah. That's awesome um, to hear because then I wanted to ask you like your family or people that, you know, 
Um, mm-hmm. Did they mentor you? Did you have that coach? Did you have people that you can ask questions and turn to when things were rough? Um, because, you know, there's ebbs and flows every single business. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, upright battle, right? Like there's always going to be challenges and turmoil and, you know, things that you have to figure out. So mm-hmm. were they around and did you use them um, to ask questions? They, de- I definitely had like open conversations with my parents about my business as I was starting. They were the ones that actually, I was going through some health issues and I do have a podcast. So I talk a lot about all of these like behind the scene things, if you are interested. Um, and they were the ones that were telling me like, Kelsey, like you've got to take this full time. Um, your health is more important than, you know, trying to just stay in corporate and grow your business. So they definitely supported that vision. And I wasn't talking to them all of the time. We've always lived in separate cities and we, we get together and like have amazing relationships then, but they don't know a lot of like the little details of my life. We don't have that kind of a relationship. Um, and yeah, I, I would call my dad and ask for team support and business support and things like that. So that was really, really nice to have. And he's in manufacturing. He has a plastics factory and I'm out here, um, you know, making swirly doodles for ad campaigns and it's a different type of business. So while some things applied, some things didn't, and there was definitely, it's about gathering that advice, learning from the nuggets, and then being able to take what works and then make it my own at the same time. And I've also been a huge proponent of getting mentorship and getting mentoring. Um, in, I've always had a business coach. In fact, like probably three at a time for just different things. I think it's so important to learn from others who have been there, who have done that, who have a unique perspective um, that you can then bring back into your life and your business. So I've always had that as well. And so I think I had this predisposition towards feeling like entrepreneurship was a safe and good choice where I know so many people do not have that. Their parents are like, stay in the corporate, like, do the safe choice. And so I'm really lucky that I did have that as like kind of the solid foundation. And then I did seek out other mentors and I've always been, I see all of your books up. I'm, I'm an avid reader as well. And so I love just like getting all of that advice from other people who have experienced things and then taking that and turning it into my own little version of things. Yeah. And that's why I love hearing too, like what you just mentioned, mentioned reaching out for different perspectives, right? People that have done it, lived it, um, achieved whatever you want to achieve and maybe has some guidance, shortcuts or short things you shouldn't be doing, right? So how did you go about seeking these mentors and coaches, uh, especially for early stage entrepreneurs? Like they don't even know what they don't know. Mm, you know what yeah, I, mean? because- I, I had my first year that was, a terrible year. I thought I would quit corporate and be able to sustain that same income, if not triple it because of all the time that I had. And I realized I didn't know what I didn't know about running a business. And that first year, I actually almost quit my business. I was applying for jobs. I was in a place where I had $200 in my bank account and my husband was like, okay, like you've got to go get a job at the grocery store. Like we need to, you know, you need to make money for our family in general. Like we both uh, participate in that. And it was a really scary moment. And so I actually had somebody reach out to me. So this is a huge proponent of building relationships, reaching out to people, seeing where they're at and seeing if you can support them and having those conversations. I think when you're starting out, I'm like, from her perspective, that was a really great opportunity because I was in a weird place where I did need support. And so she had been reaching out and I was like, yes, I need this help because being where I'm at right now is not a great place to be. And I knew that I was just not doing it right. And I knew that I could do it on my own, but I wanted to hit the easy button and be able to learn from somebody who had been there instead of trying to ebb and flow and go through all the ups and downs of doing it on my own. 
Um, and so that was during that first year that I did get that support. And then I actually went without support for a couple months and I realized, okay, like things are going well, we're really growing and scaling. I had, I went from that $200 month to a $16,000 month, three months later. And that's when I knew I was like, okay, I have the hustle in me and I can make this happen. But I also knew that the hustle was not how I wanted to live. And so I knew the answer then was really growing and scaling with team and building an agency. So I specifically sought out somebody who supports people in building team and agencies. So that was very specific instead of general business coaching. And so I always like to have both of those things in my life. I can kind of see where I want to be heading in the business and I'll get very specific business coaching programs, advice to help me implement certain things within my business. But then I also have general coaches. I have a self-care and breath work coach that I work with for a lot of my personal things and, you know, dealing with a lot of the mindset stuff that comes up as you're transforming into a CEO and a leader and a leader of employees. That, that was a huge shift for me. So I usually just see, okay, what do I need support with? Who can help me? And I generally search from there. And and that's great that you're sharing this because any entrepreneur who hasn't have, have a circle of influence, right? People that they can turn to ask questions, be honest with, be vulnerable, share stories, share experiences, because to do it alone and a lot of entrepreneurs that are struggling, stressed, frustrated with not growing, Um, they're not open to even getting coached. Um, They don't even know where to turn. What is a coach for a lot of these businesses? And they don't understand that the most successful athletes, professionals, um, whatever you may be, like they have coaches for every little aspect of their business, let alone their life, right? Why do people go through, um, you know, say a professional basketball player, hockey player, soccer player, 20 years of becoming who they are, a lot of practice training, but there's health, nutrition, exercise, stretching. There's, um, you know, shooting coaches, defense coaches, there's agile. Everything is meant to get you to a level where then you're at peak performance, right? Mm -hmm. So for you to be at that peak, you need a lot of help. To get there yeah and, and it's great that you're sharing this because even myself like I'm, I'm very fortunate to have met a ton of people and relationships and people that I respect and they're open to me and I, I like sharing and even having a, a brief discussion or phone call or going for coffee you can get so many nuggets from that um, but be open to that a lot of people are very close to their business because they don't want to share their financial struggles They don't want to share that they're not really doing as well as it may portray and perceive. Yeah. They they feel like very like embarrassed, I would say. Um, If you know what I mean, Kelsey. Yeah, I I do, John. And I also, I don't know any successful entrepreneur, honestly, in my circles who hasn't had a, a coach or a consultant or reached out for help. So I'm wondering you know, that being alone and not reaching out for the support that feels very foreign to me. And I know that that might be normal for some people to be like isolated and wow. Yeah. It just, it feels really interesting because I'm like, no, I just, I'm struggling. And so I go get support. Right. Um, that feels like a natural next step for me. And that is. So if you are struggling, it's okay. People are there to help you and support you and share. And I think it's one of those, the people giving get the most sometimes. So people love to give, I, I believe. And it's, you can always reach out for that kind of support. And most entrepreneurs want to support others because they understand what you're going through. And there's a ton of content out there from books. I love reading. I love watching YouTube videos or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love going on communities that resonate with me because I know there's specific ones that I can utilize with great expertise that can provide some insights, right? Yeah. Um, And then there's podcasts. 
there's a lot of blogs like you are in the creative content space so it's like sharing being vulnerable being authentic and then hopefully putting it out there will attract people that are like-minded so if you actually seek it you're going to receive it but if you're Absolutely. not even actively seeking nothing's going to come to you like it's like business right you think you're going to build it and everyone's going to know about you you know you have something cut out for that right like that's not going to happen in reality so it's good to hear that you know what you've done and accomplished and putting stuff out there shows that yes it's a lot of hard work a lot of time being spent and there's probably a lot of you know sleepless nights early days right like not knowing but now you see that all those things that you've done got you where you are today right yes and it absolutely took so many years to get there though it took uh, we're coming up on our 10 year anniversary of when i started my blog in august so it's really cool to see what that passion project has turned into over the years and it's really just combined everything I, I've been wanting to do and facilitated the ability to be financially stable to then be able to do whatever I feel next. And so having that design agency set that foundation so then I could start to build the coaching business. And now the coaching business is set up settling in and we're at a good place with our team and growth and projections and things like that. And so now I'm like, hmm, what is next? Like, what do we want to do? And it's, it's a cool place uh, to be able to create those things that provide that stability. And you don't usually hear entrepreneurship and stability in the same section or same sentence, not section. <laughs> um, but that's what I really love to have in my life. And so I wanted to just peel back some of these struggles, I would say, right? Those 10 years of constantly creating blog content then Pinterest images and putting it out there. Like, were there times that you, you kind of felt like you're doing all this work and you're like, why am I doing this if it's not? Yes. Yeah, definitely. And I think I have this weird compulsion in me. Like I couldn't not do it. Do you ever feel like that? Like you just, you can't help yourself, but do the thing, even though it feels really hard, but you just know that you're meant to do it and need to do it. Do you feel that way? There's sometimes, a, yeah. For me, it's more. I have a very strong will, and I yeah. really want to just keep going, right? Because mm -hmm. I know that even if it's not now revenue or now growth, it's more about like learning, and it's okay to fail. And I'd rather not. I I don't want to know what would have happened if I didn't do it. Yeah, absolutely. I'd know. rather. I'd rather take the risk of doing it and figuring out where things can go than sitting back and saying, what if? And I think that's the biggest thing at every choice and you're at every, like, I guess, stage level choice that you have as an entrepreneur, you're going to say, you know, is this worth it? Like, should I take this financial risk, this time risk, this whatever risk it is? And I'd rather say I did it. I went all out. I tried it and failed miserably and learned a lot than to wonder what if and not do it. So I do think that, yeah, there was many, I, I think the thing with what I was realizing is that I would see a lot of these overnight successes, quote unquote, and see people reaching, you know, their, their six figures in the first year. And I'm like, why did it take me six years to reach my first six figures and um, people making a million dollars in their first or second year. And I'm like, we're still on our way to our million dollars. I'm like, why is it taking me so long? And I realized something in the past month about business growth. And it was, I didn't take the safe route, but I took the stable and aligned route. And so that's going to take a little bit more time because I want to make sure that my foundation and my life is set before I do hustle and work through the night and, you know, work 24 seven through the weekends and neglect my family and my social life and my health. So taking that step back and saying, this isn't going to be as quick as I think some other people can do, but I'm choosing to really enjoy and be present in my life 
while I'm doing this. And I'm in an interesting phase right now where we're growing and scaling with employees. And this is the first year that we brought on employees rather than contractors. And so I'm actually staffing the business as if we are a $3 million company and I'm building that really solid foundation with our team before we're actually there. And I think sometimes people want to be there. They want to have the $3 million. They want to have the million dollars. They want to be in that place before they start thinking about the foundation and maybe bringing on team and doing some of those things. And it's like, you're choosing either to hustle through that and be a little unstable and get there but you're not going to be usually living that life that you truly love because that's like your only focus. Um, Or you can take that risk of staffing the team, making that choice, making the investment to create the stability in your life and your business so that you can get to that place. And I think I've always chosen that invest, do the thing to build the stability so that I'm not hitting that place where I've made a million dollars overnight, but we're built on a really rocky foundation. I think you mentioned about lifestyle Mm -hmm. and this is exactly what you created for your life. And Mm -hmm. everyone is independent. Everyone has their own lifestyle choice and understand that time. People do different things at different times of their business journey, life journey, because there's situations like family comes first, maybe for others. If you're single independent, if you have family support and you have access and resources versus if you bootstrapped it all, don't compare to others, right? And understanding that wherever you start is okay, wherever you end up is okay. But make sure that you do things that's right for you, independent of what other people think and, and you don't know, wanna share and don't compare to others, right? And, and yes, I, I feel the same way. I, I'm like, I read some of the stuff. I, sh- I look at some of the success stories. And I'm like, if only I could have done that. But then I always reflect and I'm like, I'm glad I didn't because I'm present. I'm always there for my family, my friends. I actually, you know, tap out early every day because I turn off my phone. I don't even want to check messages, right? Because this is what I wanted to create. I have a full team. I have systems, processes. I have train them to take on more accountability and be prepared for, yes, there's some risk and reward, but it's okay to not speed, you know, increase the the revenue for the speed, right? Um, Because it's probably better for sustainability as well, because it's the brand, what you've built is more, you know, longevity than you don't know what's the lifetime value of a customer. What is the perception they have, right? Like, there's a lot of things that you see and they may sound like they're making a lot of money, but really, if you peel back that onion, are they really happy? Is it real growth and real revenue? What happens in year two? What happens in year five? Right? Yeah. Are they still in a state of, I want to be an entrepreneur or are they? I know. I've seen know. so many people who grow really quickly and then burn out and they're like, this isn't the life I wanted to live. And so I think I've personally taken that path of being like really intentional and then really enjoying my life and what I want to be doing every day. And I love that you mentioned presence, John, that is something I think about every single day. And I have a two-year-old, so I am with him and we are, I just, I look at him every day and I'm like, I am being present with you and just like taking all of this in and just being there with him. And that is what makes me really happy. Like I would never trade that for growing my business faster in a year. So that's the choice I'm, I'm making every single day. And, and understand what's really important for you in your business, right? And it's not even the business anymore. If you think about that as a job, and then what is truly important, like probably family, if you have a mm-hmm. child, your friends or your, your mom and dad or brother and sister, whatever it may be, like spend time with people. And that is probably the most important thing you can do today after this pandemic, realizing what truly is important. And yes, business growth will come, but it's also timing, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you really want to be present with people, you're going to have to take away that time from business growth. 
Yeah. Because you can't be present at two places at the same time, right? You got to figure out what's really important for you. Mm-hmm. And then and then decide upon that, right? And then move on it. Um, so, you know, sharing that is great, Kelsey. I really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you don't mind sharing with the audience members some of the, the mistakes, maybe some of the challenges that you've endured in the last 10 plus years or nine plus years, you're almost in year 10. Um, and how did you overcome them? Yeah, so I think the first as you're growing into, I would say your first hundred thousand dollar year, I think the biggest mistake I made was spreading myself too thin. I was trying to, I was almost responding to what my potential clients or clients were saying that they wanted in their business. And so I would create all of these new offerings and all of these things and really just be like, you know, I'm going to start a podcast and I'm going to start a course and I'm going to create these new services. And as a solo person, when you're making revenue of less than a hundred thousand dollars per year, it's like, you're almost trying to appease what you, what people are kind of saying that they want, but you don't have a true confidence in what, you know, people need because you haven't had that experience in your business yet. So I would honestly, if I could go back and like tell myself and if, past me would actually listen. I would say focus on one offering um, that you know you love to support people with and then really learn who that customer is, um, what their wants and needs are and deliver an amazing transformation with that one thing. Because I think that once you get to know that, that all of those things, you're going to learn the marketing, you're going to learn the sales process, you're going to learn how to create systems and deliver that one service really, really well. And that's going to help you scale And then that can be repeated. You can add more uh, services or things if you'd like, but you're going to keep it simple. You're going to keep it focused and it's going to gain more traction because of that. And I think that entrepreneurs hate hearing that at first because they have so many passions and they want to do all of the things. And it's not that the things can't happen. I think We need to get really good at actually building a stable business at first and learning how to market, how to build the confidence within ourselves and how to do the sales process. And then you can create a sustainable business later on and then be able to do more things. So for me now, I'm in a place where I'm getting ready to write a book. I am doing my podcast. I have educational programs. I have a coaching business. I have a design business. Um, I'm spending time to like renovate my house because that's really fun for me. And so I'm at a place now where I'm able to do those things, but it's only because I got really specific and scaled um, with very few signature products and offerings at first. And so I think it's that don't spread yourself too thin because then you can't do any one thing well. And then looking at business owners who you want to emulate in their business model can be really helpful too. So I think as I was growing and scaling, I was again, trying so many different things and it took me forever to find that one thing that I was like, okay, this is it. And I'm going to scale with this one service, right? Like we have offerings now that we've mapped out and it's one offering that can bring in multi-million dollars, right? And I think as we're growing, we're like, I got to do all of the things and that simplicity and really planning how you can take one thing and scale it to get the lifestyle that you desire. That would be the biggest shift in kind of, I guess, that was the stem of all of the issues that I had as I was growing. And it's a great point because early days in every single business journey, people want to chase revenue. So they listen to the customers or prospects and they do it because they need to survive. Yeah. However, you want to be known for a niche, a specific product or service. And therefore, when you start owning that space, people recognize that you are the leader of that whatever product service. And then you can systemize, like you mentioned, like put in place all their pain points, issues and avatar, create that whole personality and really devote on that marketing sales and then create systems to do things at a a level that you can scale, right? Yeah. That's the whole process of SaaS businesses and every business or business ownerships in terms of, you know, 
multi uh, faceted franchises and other businesses that actually are growing, right? Like the ones that aren't growing are the ones that are probably struggling to figure out what they want to be known as. Mm-hmm. And therefore, they're constantly chasing and trying to listen and pivot and do things. But honestly, if you are known for one thing, and that's why I focus just on SEO. Yeah. Uh, I know that there's one need for a lot of businesses. And if I can do it really well with really good track record, helping my clients, I can really help them become more visible, generate more traction and all that other stuff. But I always get swayed by other people saying, do you do paid ads? Do you do this? Do you do, you know, video marketing? And, and I said, I, I basically say, here's a list of people. Go call them and vet them <laughs> because mm-hmm. I don't want to do it because then my name's on the line. Yeah, so. absolutely. And I think in our design agency, there was a long time where I would, we would do any brand. We would do any website, like we can do e-commerce and apps and blah, blah, blah. And it was a lot. And so I never, we never got really good at one thing, but what we did after a while is like, okay, we got a niche down. We got to figure out what we do really well. And so the themes of the clients that I loved working with, that I felt personally connected with, that we were really seeing some big results come from our work together was online personal brands. So people who are building their own personal brands, they are selling um, online services or education um, or consulting. So that was like, we're building personal brands. They usually have some marketing funnels and sales pages and webinars and things like that. And they're really, um, they're selling usually B2, no, it can be B2B or B2C, but it's online personal brands. We work in one platform and we just do it really well. And so that has been awesome because we've gotten more known for that. And at this point, our business runs completely on, I guess the past SEO and Pinterest that we were doing, people still naturally find us from that and referrals. And we've actually, for the past three years, I have not put out any new work um, publicly. We have not, um, I've not done any marketing. We just solely are able to run on some of those referrals because of the work that we're doing and the transformation that we're getting our clients. And now that I have more time because the coaching business is set and scaled, I'm actually going back and I'm going to be working on scaling the agency and actually putting some marketing effort towards it. But it's cool to see once we niched how we were able to just grow without a ton of effort because it was just happening naturally. And, and that's what I mean. People come to you knowing what they're looking for. And people forget that if you, they want to cast a big net to think to cater towards more people, that means they're going to generate more revenue. But the more refined you are, the more targeted you are, people will seek you out knowing exactly what they want. And the conversion rate is so much higher. But a lot of people forget this, right? As a business, Mm -hmm. when you're starting, you want to do everything. You want to service everyone. But then you realize who you really want to work with, who you're good working with, and who pays the bills, and who also you like spending time with, right? Like all these things only as you mature in your business will you realize and it's hard to get to the new entrepreneurs to understand this. And I think after you've done a year or two, something that I like to do and something we do with our clients is like, look at all the clients that you worked with within that time and space, rank them on how much you enjoyed the project, how long it took, what revenue it brought in, what profit, because a lot of times we're hiring certain things out and things don't end up being as profitable as we think in our heads. And so really mapping that all out, um, you can see like, oh, here's a theme. Like here's where I need to either be focusing my marketing efforts because, oh, another thing is tracking where the clients actually came from. So did they come from SEO? Did they come from Instagram? Was it, did you meet them at a live event, et cetera? And so you can kind of see where do I need to focus more of my marketing efforts? Like what was working? Um, to get the clients that I actually enjoyed working with that are also profitable. And I think doing that analysis of all of your clients can be really helpful for niching down and making those decisions moving forward. Yeah. 
this is good when you're new, right? And I always mm-hmm. tell people like I I work with more established businesses, so they already have yes. Members, <laughs> and I basically say, who is your ten best? Let's profile and give me a whole personality of trying to create a website to only attract those those kind of customers, right? Yep. And therefore, I don't need to do that market research analysis when they approach me because they they kind of know who they are. Um, totally. And then with that in mind, then I can really dominate and help them become a, a big figure visibly, right? Because then there's no testing and there's no paid ads and retargeting ads, A-B testing, all heat maps. All that stuff is irrelevant because then I could focus on really doing it really well for them, refining that message. Um, so it's, it's great that you're mentioning that because even that multimedia touchpoint approach, right? Like a podcast, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, you know, LinkedIn, there's all these different channels today from apps to search engines to traditional online digital. And then there's ads that target you everywhere, right? Like following. Mm -hmm. Um, How are people absorbing that content? How do you want to be presented? And what, what kind of client do you really want? Yeah. Most people want the warm type of clients, the ones that already know you trust you and just want to commit basically on price because they trust that you know what you're doing. Yeah. And price almost becomes a little irrelevant or irrelevant. Why irrelevant? Why can't I speak today? Um, when you're at that stage, because people after they already know, like, and trust you, they know what kind of transformation you take your clients and customers from. And so even if you're double the price of somebody else, they'll still go with you because they want that transformation and they trust the process and how you're going to go about that. Exactly. And those are your ideal type of clients. Yes. (laughs) And the more of those ideal customers you have uh, or prospects, then you don't have to take on every single prospect or lead or client. So it takes time to get there, but it is possible if you constantly want to get better in your business, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So just a couple of questions here that I want to ask you, Kelsey. Um, So what is your kind of big goal? Like, where do you see yourself in 5, 10, 20 years? Because I know you're working on a book. You're really scaling your business. You have a little daughter, I believe. Um, A little boy. (laughs) A little boy. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, you know, family is big. Lifestyle is big for you. Like, where do you see yourself? Yeah. So I think one of the biggest passions that I have is making sure that everybody can live aligned lives and that they have accessibility to that. And so one of the biggest things I'm working towards, and I don't know exactly where it will take me and or people, but right now it is mentoring and influencing people to create, um, whether it's like entrepreneurship products or things that they can create more income from, um, being able to know that they can actually go out there and create money and opportunities sometimes for themselves. And then within like socioeconomics, I want to provide opportunities, um, and really train the clients I'm working with to diversify who they are working with and how they are supporting others within their own organization. So I, don't know what this looks like and feels like exactly, but I have this like bigger internal mission that I feel like I'm working towards to really help society, but doing it like person by person by person inside of our programs and maybe who my book is reaching, who the podcast is reaching. And I really just want people to be able to have amazing careers, amazing lives that they feel supported in and like they can actually have that belief that they can go out and create whatever they want to do in the world without um some of the you know systemic issues that are currently happening in the world and I probably always have been but it's really I want to provide that inspiration and opportunity and then influence the entrepreneurs I'm working with to be able to also touch the other people in a micro way rather than like a bigger global um, way. So that was bigger and maybe a little political, but 
that's kind of where I see myself going as a bigger influencer um, for that and supporting other people in entrepreneurship. So I do see myself being a keynote speaker, writing the book, like spreading that general message with um, like um, as an umbrella and then products, courses, things that support that bigger mission. So I'm currently doing it through um, working with other online business owners and in our coaching programs. But I hope that that general message, you can see I'm foggy. It's like all this new stuff I'm kind of like stepping into recently. I'm in this, like I'm developing it. Um, and I see myself heading in that direction. That's great though, because at least you have some sort of mission out there. Yes. And, you know, to be clear on what you want to do is very difficult and it's going to take time because you're going to have to change and pivot along yeah. the way on who you want to serve, who mm-hmm. are the people that resonate with your values. And it's great that you're putting your perspective, your input on it, because then you're, that's what true leadership is all about, right? Making, yeah. it own, making it so that you're serving others and you're having a lasting uh, impact in the world. So that's great. Um, and then last question in terms of pillars. Okay. Cause yeah, I know this is a question I always ask people, what are some of the biggest drivers of the pillars that really mold you as Kelsey? Because business seems to be a big focus for you. So is family. What mm-hmm. about, you know, other pillars such as health and community and travel and all these other pillars? Yeah. So you touched on the two that I dive most into and health is really important to me. And it always seems to be the one thing that like it takes the back seat. And so that's something I'm like, I'm always working on. I'm like, why is that? Like I get my sleep, but I still will just like eat pizza on Friday nights. And I'm like, I know I shouldn't be doing that. And all of these things. So that's one thing I really want to value in my heart. And then my actions sometimes are differently. Um, it's really growing the business. I, our values as a company are really that love and friendship. So making sure that other people feel seen and heard and that we're spreading love and being friendly while we do that. I don't know if that's necessarily a pillar. I don't think I've ever thought about my, my life pillars, John. <laughs> But that's uh, something I always ask, because as you grow and you become more wise, things change, right? Like life throws you a lot of wrenches in your life and you just need to adapt, pivot, change and Mm -hmm. grow. And, um, you know, just maybe think about that, because I always wanted to see what others really think as a a lifespan, right? If you're going to be around for 90 or 100 years what are truly important in your life? Because business yeah. is a small segment or career or job is one of the strong components, but so is friendships, community, giving, sharing, mm-hmm. you know, all these other things are. Important. Yeah. And I really, when you're saying that, and this might change in the future, but I do feel like through the work I'm doing and the business I'm running, I'm able to, impact in a bigger way and give back and create communities and be able, I've met some of my best friends in this space and my whole social life is basically on the internet and traveling to events. (laughs) Um, And so I do value those things very deeply. And I think the way that I'm fulfilling that is currently under the umbrella of my business and career. So it it could change in the future. I, I think I am the business is the bigger umbrella and then like family is the bigger umbrella, but everything else is kind of falling under that to support it. Yeah. It allows for it. Right. So it yeah. is on its own, but because business has allowed opportunities for you to form new friendships and build communities amongst that. It's great that you are able to do that, which meant you took action. And yeah. therefore I, I love you know, entrepreneurs, because we're the ones that are doing something, typically, where a lot of people are hesitant to try something new. So Mm -hmm. we're kind of more forward thinkers, we, we make mistakes, yes, we, we fail a lot. But it's okay, right? It's like, how do you endure those turbulations? And 
you know, failures and how do you pick yourself up? Because it's stressful. It's totally, um, um, but how do you persevere? So, um, Thanks a lot, Kelsey, for this great conversation. So how can some of the listeners get in touch with you, reach out if they have any questions? Uh, if you don't mind sharing your handles, uh, that'd be great. Yeah, you can start by going to pinegateroad.com. Everything will be there. And I'm at Kelsey Kerslake on Instagram. And I'm always there. I'm always chatting. And I love hanging out with people on Instagram. That's definitely the go-to. So please come and say hi. And you also mentioned you had a podcast. So if you I do, that. yeah. So that it's the Align Business Podcast. And you can find that through the website at pinegateroad.com slash podcast. Um, I do believe we're on, you know, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, all of those good places. So check that out too if you're wanting to learn more about the entrepreneurship journey, aligning it with your life and growing and scaling an online business in fun, cool ways. Amazing. I want to really thank you for your time. I know you're really busy and you're here to make a huge impact and splash in the world. So I love hearing that you're supporting so many new entrepreneurs in their own aspirations and goals. So thanks a lot, Kelsey. Thank you, John, for having me. This was really fun. Thank you. 